Alright guys, in this video tutorial we'll be talking about role of interferon in immune system. So let's talk about it. Interferons are playing very vital role during the signaling of immune cells. So it, it is uh, helping the cell to cross talk between themselves uh, to finally prepare themselves for uh, the killing. But again, this, among all those interferons, there are interferon alpha, beta, gamma. Interferon gamma, this one, IFN gamma, is stands to uh, stands to uh, still, and this uh, gamma interferon gamma is playing the most important role of all. So let's find out how this interferon is uh, telling a cell, and it is killing a foreign uh, uh, pathogen invaded cell, and also it is killing a viral cell. Now let's look at here. Now this process of interferon uh, mediated pathway is uh, of four different stages so let's talk about each of the stage at a time so let's begin with the first stage now what is going is suppose this is a normal healthy cell and inducer virus just insert inside the cell so once this virus induced inside the cell this virus is telling the DNA and and it is providing some downstreaming signaling to DNA. Finally, it will provide some interferon mRNA. Whenever it finds that the virus is invading the body, so it starts making interferon mRNA, start making interferon protein. So this is the very beginning and very first step to synthesize interferon proteins. So now we are having interferon proteins and these IFNs are now released outside in the extracellular space. Then this IFN proteins will come and bind with the interferon receptors. As you can see here, they come and bind with the interferon receptors that are found in interferon sensitized cells. So you must write interferon sensitized cells, right? So once they are bound with the interferon sensitized cell with the interferon receptor, remember we have talked about interferon receptor, they are one type of uh, what you can say. Uh, immune receptor or, or cytokine receptor or chemokine receptor so, so they are having four different domains and all these things anyways now after the attachment of IFN to the IFN receptors found in interferon sensitized cell they will further provide some downstreaming function to the nucleus and it is telling the DNA uh, to provide some mRNA which will code for finally uh, proteins two different important factors one is the synthesis of oligo A synthetase so oligo A synthetase this is the first important thing and second thing is that they are providing some pro producing some inactive protein kinase. So two important things are translated from this mRNA after the attachment of IFN signaling. One is the oligo A synthetase enzyme. So this is a kind of enzyme. And second one is the inactive protein kinase. This is also another enzyme which is having the ability to phosphorylate other proteins. Right? So now let's look at the third part. Now once they are produced, once they are produced in this case, enzyme and PK is already ready. Now again, let's say infection virus entered into our body, which is the interferon sensitized cell. And we have seen this fact where there is no interferon, so no sensitization. But now once the cell is getting sensitized to the interferon, then in the second time infection virus infect the cell. It is again doing all these things. It is providing its, its RNA and all this fact. Now what we need to do, we need to kill this virus, right? So we can do or achieve this pathway in two different ways. One is that we need to degrade. First of all, we can degrade. We can degrade RNA of the virus. Right? So this is a one process of achieving our goal. Second thing is that, is that we will prevent uh, to form different proteins so this is the second important part right this is the second important part so we can uh, carry two different uh, important uh, part to prevent this virus for the infection now let's say here the oligo a synthetase is produced now this oligo a synthetase what it will do that it will act on atp and it will convert atp into 25 oligoadenylate so once this 2,5 oligoadenylate is produced, this 2,5 oligoadenylate or oligoadenylic acid will act on inactive endoribonuclease. So we know that endonuclease is an enzyme which can degrade a mRNA from the middle ribonuclease because it's a ribonuclease, it will cleave a ribonucleic acid or RNA. So it activates uh, this endoribonuclease. Now this endoribonuclease will chop up viral DNA into smaller fragments so that the viral virus cannot package its DNA into uh, and it cannot thrive, right? This is the first way of response that we have achieved this one. Now let's say the second response. Now in the second response what it will do is that, remember they produce two enzymes, one is the oligo A synthetase, the activity of which we have seen. Now the rest of the enzyme is protein kinase, which is also synthesized in activated form, right? Now this inactive uh, phosphorylase kinase or protein kinase is activated 
by the phosphorylation event. So we are having phosphorylation onto the inactive protein kinase and after the phosphorylation it becomes activated protein kinase. Now this active protein kinase can phosphorylate EIF2 initiation factor. Now this initiation factor is required for the translation and for the production of viral proteins. Right? So viral proteins because viral require both the part proteins as well as their genomic part. Genomic part is already degraded but if we again prevent them to produce protein again so they cannot package, they cannot remove or they cannot release the cell, right? So after that we phosphorylate this EIF2 initiation factor and it will make this active factor into inactive one. As a result of that the synthesis of viral protein is blocked. So virus now uh, is unable to produce any protein, they are unable to manage to survive inside the cell in the intact form of RNA. So in both the ways they are degraded. Now using this interferon you can see the, the interferon access is very very important to tell the cell to make the cell ready to fight against the infection in this way. So it's an intracellular process, cell's own process to go against viruses. But despite of all these things when the cell uh, is unable to fight against the virus or the invading pathogen, in those cases it need to call upon other cells. Other cells like it need to chop those fragments, it need to hold on to via MHC. So you can see the chopped up RNA fragments they can hold on to via MHC or protein fragments they can hold on to MHC. Then other cells will come, they will interact and they will tell the cell that what is going on and all these things. That's how the whole process actually works. So interferon is good. So thanks to interferon to protecting us against this kind of viral invaders. Okay, so that's it. And I hope that's helpful. Thank you.